one of the weirdest things about fire, it needs certain things to survive, just like an animal does in some ways. Um, it needs heat to get it going, and then to keep it going, it needs oxygen <coughs> and some kind of fuel. So, <coughs> before we address the heat issue and the oxygen I issue, we gotta address the fuel issue. We gotta get uh, collect a bunch of materials that will help us to light the fire uh, once we get the other ingredients all lined up. So, here's where your plant, your tree and plant ID will come in handy. Because not every plant burns the same. Um, and certain plants provide really, really important materials to help you get a fire started, especially when uh, it rains all the time around here. Wet materials are really hard to get going because, as you probably know, water puts out fires. So, how do you find dry materials to build fires with when it rains constantly? Uh, the answer is you gotta look. Um, you gotta know what to look for. So, here's one of my first favorite ones I wanted to show you first favorite plants that provides a really good tinder material. Uh, now, tinder is just a very, very fine, shredded up. Uh, material that burns really really easy and if you know where to look you can find it all over the place uh, and it's even usually pretty dry so this first one this is actually a wild grapevine and believe it or not you see this bark right here this that I'm peeling off it's actually not hurting the vine to do this at all because this is all loose but what I can do is I can process this, if I collect enough of it, I can kind of uh, bundle, up, bundle it all up and then kind of shred it up really fine to make a really good tinder. So I'm going to collect some more of this and we're going to find another example of a really good tinder source uh, in a minute to show you. Now this is an amazing resource right here. Uh, this happens to be a service berry tree that died a while ago and the bark from this tree is naturally been peeling off and it's all nice and shredded. Look at that. This is like really fine shredded newspaper almost. Um, Tree bark is probably one of the very best tinder sources there is. As long as you can find a tree that's been dead a while and the bark is starting to come apart like this and it's dry. So once again, it's not hurting this tree at all to use this bark because the tree has long been, it's been dead a long time. So we can use as much as we want <coughs> and we can save some for later if we want to collect it now and dry it for later. So one of the best places to find finely shredded bark like this, right along the creek, really any creek, uh, if it's a deep creek and it's got roots exposed coming out of the bank and the water comes up really fast sometimes and carries a tree bark like this downstream, it'll catch on those roots and the water, the action of the water, it'll actually shred up this bark and then as the bark sits there and it's caught on those roots it'll dry out in the sun. And so a lot of times I walk along the creeks and I'll find bark like this, it's just perfectly processed. Uh, there's a lot of trees that'll give you really fine bark that's good to work with. Some of the best though that I've uh, reliably found in the area, basswood and eastern red cedar are both really awesome barks, tree barks for this. Some bark, tree bark, doesn't like to shred up as well. Others just, <clears throat> they rot, it rots really fast. Um, it just depends on the tree, but the point is if you're looking for the right uh, <clears throat> type of material like this and you know where to find it, it doesn't really matter necessarily what kind of tree it is as long as the bark is dead, it's dry, and it's shredded up nice and fine like this.
Okay, so here's another uh, really awesome source of tinder that you might not really think would be a good place to get it, but uh, believe it or not, if you find a swamp kind of wetland area, there's so many, there's so much dead grass from the previous year that you can use for tinder. These are all mostly dead cattails, but there's also uh, dead sedges. Sedges are a type of wetland grass that has edges. <laughs> so the phrase is, sedges have edges. Uh, and rushes, like this, this is a green round one. Sedges have, es have edges and rushes are round, is the phrase. But you can use all this dead material for really good tinder. Along with the dead sedges, you don't really find grasses make really good tinder as well. So let's see what else we can find. Alright, so this right here is another awesome tinder resource. Uh, and these are all dead, of course. They're goldenrod. And anybody who's ever walked into an old abandoned hay field or a place where a bunch of trees have just been cut a few years ago is going to find a lot of these. So these seed heads right here, see these? These are all actually seeds from the golden rod. You can break these off and kind of ball them up into this awesome, really dry tinder material as long as it's off the ground. So that's the big thing. Is it off the ground? Anything that's sitting right on the ground is usually going to be wet. Anything off the ground is going to usually be dry or at least drier than everything else. Okay, so we're back at camp where we built the shelter. There it is over there. I gathered a bunch of firewood here and some other fire building materials to kind of show you the progression of size materials that you got to collect to make a fire work. So, here's our collection of tinder materials. There's the service berry bark that we collected, the wetland grasses, the goldenrod, the grapevine, there's some more grasses. <clears throat> then we have a bunch of very, very fine twigged hemlock branches. After that we have uh, very small twigs that are a little bigger than that. Then we go up to branches that are about as big as a pencil. Then we go up to branches bigger than that. And then we have even bigger branches. So as you can see, uh, the size diameter of the material goes up as you go out from the middle of the fire to get it started here. Remember to only get dead branches, dead materials for this. You know, live stuff. It's not going to burn anyway. Okay, so now that we have all of our tinder, our kindling, and our medium sized wood, we can start lighting a fire, or try to light a fire. Before we do that, though, I wanted to give you guys a couple of safety tips to think about. For one thing, if you're going to light a fire in the woods somewhere, make sure it's legal to do that. Uh, there's a lot of places where there's burn bans, state forests, um, game lands, um, parks. Some of them really frown on people building fires out in the woods. Uh, and sometimes there's a burn ban that's in place for people on their own private property too. <laughs> Luckily right now, there is a burn ban in New York State where I'm at, but they allow for small campfires during the burn ban this time of year. So we're okay there. 
Besides that, you want to clear away all loose debris, leaves, dead things away from your fire area, down to bare soil. And if you can, you know, line the fire pit with uh, some sort of hard uh, metamorphic rock like quartz or granite. It won't explode when it heats up. You never want to put soft sandstone or shale inside a fire because water might be inside there, inside those stones. When water heats up, it expands, and that can cause the stone to explode. So you never want to put really soft, porous stones in a fire for that reason. Uh, just really hard quartz, metamorphic rock like, like that, or uh, granite, which is an igneous rock. So here's your geology again. But um, never leave a fire unattended. That's another good one. If you light a fire, don't just leave it there to let it burn on its own. Put it out with some water when you're done. And uh, <clears throat> don't, you know, don't waste fuel. Don't put a lot of stuff in there that you know you're not going to have time to burn or you don't need to burn. Okay, so respect the resource and it'll respect you. Let's see if we can light that fire.